Is it ever safe to take prednisone long term? Hi, I'm Dr. Megan, the prednisone pharmacist. I'm here to talk to you about some specific risk factors that you may or may not have that would determine whether it's safe for you to take prednisone long term. So there's a big debate between rheumatologists, those are the doctors who prescribe prednisone the most, about whether it's safe to take prednisone long term. Some doctors are like, no way. There's not a safe dose of prednisone, never touch it, never prescribe it, don't give it long-term. And there are other doctors who say, look, I know we want to minimize the dose, but the fact is people end up on it. And so if they're gonna be ending up on it anyway, let's figure out where's the safest dose for your patient, right? There's no black and white answer here, okay? There's no perfect answer for any individual. But we can know some factors that might show whether or not the benefits might outweigh the risks. So the benefits of treatment for a condition such as rheumatoid arthritis are many. So it's not just the pain relief and the inflammation relief. There's actually evidence that prednisone can help prevent bone remodeling and like the joint damage from rheumatoid arthritis when given long term. It alone can help with the disease itself. So is there a dose that's safe that you can get that benefit without so many risks? So I want to go through this chart. This chart shows where there's, it's pretty much safe for most people. And then where it's pretty much not safe for most people. And then the middle ground where it's tricky. So let's first talk about the good news. The good news is if you're taking zero milligrams of prednisone a day, it's perfectly safe, right? If you don't take anything, it's perfectly safe. But if you're taking one or two, two and a half, three, four, even up to five milligrams, it's safer, okay? There truly is no perfectly safe dose of prednisone, but five milligrams or less per day is safer, okay? So in whom is it safer? When do the benefits outweigh the risks? So let's talk about these specific factors that might be applicable to you, see if they do. Generally, if you're diagnosed early, before a lot of damage has set in, if you have low disease activity, it's not out of control, a low amount of prednisone you've been exposed to long-term, that's called a low cumulative glucocorticoid dosage, you have a healthy lifestyle. You don't smoke, you don't drink alcohol, and your doctors are monitoring your treatment and your risk factors. In that case, you're generally otherwise healthy. What about the top side effects of prednisone that they're worried about long-term? The main one is definitely osteoporosis. They call it glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis, or GIOP. And for this, there are some risk factors. If you have low vitamin D, so if you are eating enough calcium and vitamin D, you've had your vitamin D level tested to make sure that it's in the normal range and not that it's not low, you exercise, you keep your muscles strong to support your bones. You are taking osteoporosis medications if you need them, such as bisphosphonates like Fosmax or Alendronate or osteoanabolic drugs or selective estrogen receptor modulators. There are a lot of things you could do, prescription medications you could take if you're a woman and you have osteoporosis. And so if you're taking those, then your risk for further damage from the prednisone is lower. So the first one was osteoporosis. The second one is infections. Before treatment or at the beginning of treatment, it's best to get the vaccinations you need. I have a whole video all about these. You should check that out. Be screened for infections like tuberculosis or they can even do risk scores before therapy. And they, they want you to avoid infected people, take care of yourself, wear a mask, wash your hands, get good sleep. The third, side effect that's long-term that they're worried about is carbohydrate metabolism or diabetes, things that are affecting your blood sugars. And so are you eating a healthy diet? Are you getting appropriate exercise, keeping your weight under control? If you're getting a lot of water weight gain, the swelling, could you go on a diuretic to help have your body pee out the excess fluids? And the fourth one they're worried about is your heart, your cardiovascular system. Are you eating a heart healthy diet, low in salt, and trans fats. Again, are you getting physical activity and exercise and keeping your health, your weight healthy? If all of those things are true, then taking five milligrams or less per day long-term for rheumatoid arthritis is generally safe for you. Now let's go to the opposite extreme. 
where you need to take 10 milligrams a day or more, or where the benefits aren't going to outweigh the risks, even at lower doses. Okay. So these are patient specific factors that are detrimental. In general, if you have a high disease activity, you have been on prednisone for a long time and you have a high cumulative dosage that you've been exposed to. You have an unhealthy lifestyle. I had somebody post who said, my daily habit is I take an NSAID like ibuprofen, nicotine, alcohol, and on and on. And he talks about all of these things he's doing. And those things alone, it's not like black and white. It's not like you can't do them, but it increases your risks for the really bad side effects that prednisone causes. I was trying to give him that like explanation that it's not black and white. It's not like, oh, you're smoking. And so therefore prednisone is going to be really bad for you. No, it's if you're smoking, you have an increased risk for infections an increased risk for osteoporosis, increased risk for cardiovascular complications. And so if you are smoking, you drink a lot of alcohol and you eat a standard American diet with poor nutrition, those do not help while you're on prednisone. So let's go to the number one side effect is osteoporosis. If you're over the age of 60, if you're a woman of the female gender, you are low body weight. So generally low body weight is a good thing, but when it comes to osteoporosis, you are at a higher risk for osteoporosis. When you are frailer, like smaller and have less muscle mass to support your bones. If you have low bone mineral density, you have a family history of osteoporosis, I definitely do. And you have prevalent fractures. So you, you've broken your bone in the past. You've had a loss of height. You've shrunk and you're not eating a diet high in calcium. Those are all risks that are detrimental for your potential for not getting osteoporosis. Number two, infections. Again, if you're over the age of 60, but this time, if you are a man uh, of the male gender and you have other conditions, comorbidities, called chronic lung disease, coronary heart disease, heart failure, peripheral vascular disease, diabetes mellitus, hepatitis C, chronic renal diseases, that's kidney failure, leukopenia, that's problems with your white blood cells, neurological diseases. You've tried everything and you've had a high number of treatment failures and you've had prior serious infections. You're more likely to have future infections and the benefit of prednisone long-term may not outweigh the risks for you. The third most worrisome side effect is carbohydrate metabolism changes. Prednisone is a glucocorticoid, gluco meaning glucose, meaning sugar. It's how it works. It actually changes the way your sugar works. And so if we're worried about what it's going to do to your system, it's going to cause high blood sugar, which can lead to diabetes. Diabetes can lead to all sorts of complications to your heart and you have to go on medications. And so if you are older, it's at higher age, you have a higher body mass index, you have a genetic predisposition. So you have family members who have diabetes and you've had your disease for a long time. Then it's more likely that you might get diabetes from prednisone and that the benefits of long-term prednisone may not outweigh the risks for you. Finally is cardiovascular disease. So prednisone can cause irreversible damage to the cardiovascular system. And these are more likely if you are older and male, and if you have rheumatoid arthritis, you have severe extra articular disease manifestations. What does that mean? It means it's not just in the joints, that you're having symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis other places. If you are rheumatoid factor positive or anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide antibody positive, if you have either of those positive, you're more likely to have worse disease. Or if you have comorbidities, high blood pressure, which is hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, which is high blood cholesterol, obesity, and Cushing syndrome. If any or all of those are true for you, then the benefits of prednisone treatment long-term may not be worth it. You are at a higher risk for osteoporosis, infections, diabetes, and heart disease coming from the prednisone itself because of your personal risk factors. And so you really wanna have a good discussion with your doctor. Hey, I've got all of these things going on. Should I really be on this drug long-term or would a different drug be better? But sometimes you really don't have any choice and sometimes you're in the middle. And so it's a really tricky situation to decide. 
is the benefit of treatment worth it for me? Is having no joint pain and no inflammation and less disease progression worth it to run the risk for these long-term irreversible side effects? It's a really tricky question you have to go through with your doctor. But there are things you can do, right? All of the things on the good list, you can change. If you smoke, you can stop smoking. If you drink a lot of alcohol, you can stop drinking a lot of alcohol. If you eat a poor diet, you can eat a better diet. I actually have a complete list of the things that you can do to improve the benefit and risks for you. It's called the prednisone checklist. It goes through the things that you can do, the things you can check on to make sure that you are doing all you can to make prednisone the best experience for you as possible, that the benefits truly outweigh the risks for you. Plus in it, I go through the top seven mistakes people make while taking prednisone. I don't want you to have to make those mistakes. So I outline them for you so that you can figure out exactly whether or not the benefits are gonna outweigh the risks for you and how to prevent those mistakes. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. <music>